Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today we're going to take a look at a new lighting product from DCC Concepts. Now these are scaled for double O and HO scale uh, layouts, installations, and they represent three different errors. So let's go ahead and get started with a look at these, and then we'll do an installation on the Piedmont Southern. Now, as I said in the opening, we're going to take a look at these new lamps from DCC Concepts. And I first saw these when I visited the Worley Model Railway Exhibition in England uh, back in November, over Thanksgiving weekend, uh, back in November of 2022. And these were brand new at the time. They were selling like hotcakes left and right because these really are a very nice product. So right here on the left, we have a lamp that is designed to represent gas lamps that were used um, during the 1800s and up into the early 1900s. And one of the things about these, though, is that they carried through into the more modern era because in many cases they did just pull out the gas fixtures that were in these and the tubing and replace it with electrical wiring and electrical fixtures inside the lamp housing. So they would work great on a lot of model railroads that cover anything from the 1800s up, say, through the 1950s or so. Now, the next one are these green ones right here. And these are what's called a swan neck lamp because of this curved lamp neck right here. And these represent an era, well, probably the 1930s forward, when they were installing electric lights in many of these. And what they did in some cases, instead of electrifying the old uh, gas lamp housing, they simply replaced it with this metal curved neck and the um, lamp fixture up here. And otherwise, other than that, the base is almost identical, if not identical, to the lamp base for the gas light housing. And I have seen these uh, in Virginia at Southern Railway Stations. I believe the one out in the Plains uh, in Virginia has uh, fixtures like this on the platform there. Now, so those will bring you through uh, up to the modern era, basically, in many cases. Now, over here are fixtures or lamps that represent the modern era. So this is something is commonly seen uh, around uh, railroad stations, any, any type of installation where you've got a parking lot and they have a nice tall straight pole with a very flat LED fixture, a high intensity LED fixture in these. And that's what is modeled here. And right here on the pole, they've included a speaker and closed circuit TV housing. They also have additional clip-on uh, speaker and CCTV uh, camera housings as well. So you can add those to the fixtures here. They just put a couple on uh, just so you can see that. For those of you in the UK, uh, let me point out that they have just, DCC Concepts, have just entered into a, a deal with uh, West Hill Wagon Works. And West Hill is producing a whole series of fixtures that go with these and go on platforms that allow you to uh, model your platforms just like you see them today. And, and I'll put a link to their video on that uh, above me here and at the end so that you can take a look at that West Hill Wagon Works uh, production uh, for these. So what I want to do is let's pull one of these out and I'll show you how you go about uh, installation, what comes with them, all of that, and we'll take a look at, uh, at how easy it is to install these in a minute. So this one here is the Swan Neck and it has a high intensity surface mount LED located inside of the housing here. The interesting thing that they've done here is they have this extension here that allows you to elevate it so that you can have a fairly short lamp commonly found on platforms or you can have a much taller lamp by using that extension base here. And that allows it to be much, much taller for use, say, in a parking area or other areas where you want it raised up a little bit higher. What you can do is you can take this extension base, pull it down, and then you can slide that support tube out. And that allows you to then take that off and then 
they have these brass tubes that fit through the top of your layout. So with these, you drill a two millimeter diameter hole, and that comes out to about 5 64th inches. And with that, you can insert this metal tube, and it supports the lamp. Let me show you that. What you have to do then is take these two very thin wires that come with these, and they're about, it looks like it's about three feet long, and then you can just thread that down through here. And let me point out that the longer of the two wires is positive. So you need to keep that in mind, and you always need to keep that, even if you cut these shorter, make sure that you cut the positive leg longer so that you can keep them separated. Okay, so then I'm just going to feed that wire right on through. Kinks sometimes catch. Got a kink in there. There we go. So I'm going to feed that wire right on through, and you can see that it's going to slide up in here. And then the lamp will sit on top of that tube that you insert in the base first. So on your layout, you drill your two millimeter diameter hole, or 5 64ths, and insert this tube, slide the two wires down through it, bring the lamp housing or lamp base down over that, and that's all there is to installing these. So for powering these, they can be powered and controlled using either uh, DCC or DC. And on the Piedmont Southern, I have both, but what I'm going to be doing with these is using my DC power bus, because I have a 12-volt bus that runs out under the entire layout just for powering LEDs and fixtures like this one. So we've got two wires here. The, long one, the longer of the two is positive. The other one is negative. And then what they, and these have to have, an, in the DC mode, they have to be powered with somewhere between 6 and 15 volts. And you have to use a regulated power supply. One other thing that they include with this are these little circuit boards for use with DC power. So you simply attach your positive and your negative feeds, and in my case it's going to be the 12 volt feeds from my power bus, to this one here, and they're marked plus and minus. And then here on the board they have this series of resistors. Each one of these is for a different brightness of LED. So all you have to do is hook up your positive and your negative input power here, attach your negative lead right here to this uh, contact, and then touch the positive wire, the longer of the two wires, to any one of these three contacts here on the circuit board. And this one will give you, this is the lowest value resistor, so it's going to give you the brightest LED light. And then this one is intermediate, and then this is the dimmer of the three. So all you have to do is, like I said, make your contacts here from your power bus, just by soldering two wires to these, plus and minus. Attach your negative wire from your LED lamp fixture here. And then just touch the positive wire to each one of these in sequence. And watch the... LED in the fixture or in the lamp light up, and that way you'll be able to pick the intensity of lighting that you want with the lamp. So it's pretty easy to do, and I'll show you that here uh, in a minute when I do the demo uh, installation. So they've given you everything you need. These even come with a little bit of foam tape here. So you can peel that off and stick it to the underside of your model railroad uh, once you've made your electrical connections and not worry about it after that. And I believe they say you can connect up to three LEDs to these lighting boards. But I believe they include, yes, they include a large number of these little boards in here. So they have eight in here. I believe that's enough for all of the fixtures that come with the kit. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. In addition to the lamps that go on the platform, they also have these wall mount uh, lamps for you. 
So you can put these on your stations or on any other uh, building or pole, whatever, however you want to mount them. They're there and uh, included in this kit. So this particular uh, configuration of the kit has six different lamps plus the two wall mount lamps. So that's the basic configuration. They also uh, sell the wall mount lamps separately. There's two in this package. And they have a package that has, I believe, three of the platform lamps in a package. So you can take a look at their website, again, dccconcepts.com, and uh, just look for uh, lamps, and you'll be able to find these. Now, I know that you're going to ask me, you guys in the U.S., uh, ironplanethobbies.com is the dealer for these here in the U.S. I know that they have a couple of the gas lamps and a couple of the uh, modern era type lamp kits. I believe those are the three lamp kits though. For the rest, you'll have to either order them directly from dccconcepts.com off of their website or from one of their dealers such as Rails of Sheffield uh, in the UK and they'll be happy to ship those to you. And it uh, only takes about a week or so for them to get these to you by, uh, by mail. And that's the cheapest route to go about. I would not recommend using DHL or any of the other uh, courier type services. That can get very expensive. I said a minute ago that these can be powered with either DC or DCC. And the way that you power and control these with DCC is using their Alpha Mimic control system. And I did a video on how to light up my uh, gas works using the Alpha Mimic about a year ago, and I'll put a link uh, above me here on the left, on my left, on your right, to that video so that you can see how you can control these and power these up using DCC controls and DCC power uh, using the Alpha Mimic system. But I'm not going to go through that installation today. Okay, let's go on over to the Piedmont Southern and we'll install one of these on the platform at the Charlottesville uh, station Let's go ahead and do an installation here at the Charlottesville uh, station. And I'm going to install one of these uh, swan neck lamps right at the end of the platform here. Now, as I showed earlier, you have the option of either installing these with or without this extension base. So if you want a very tall lamp, you would use that one. And it gets you something that's going to be about that tall. But you can also install it just with the base as it comes there, without the extension base. And that's going to give you something that's going to be on the order of that tall. So a little bit more realistic, I think, in this particular setting. Now there are some settings where you might want a taller lamp, such as in a, a parking lot or something of that nature. But right here next to the depot, I want something about that tall. So the first thing we're going to do then is install this little brass sleeve on the layout. And for that, I've got my drill. So let's get started with that. Now what I have here in the drill is a 5 64th inch bit. And that comes out to about 2 millimeters, which is the diameter of this little brass sleeve. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole right here at the end of the platform through the foam and in through the plywood. And let me make sure there's nothing underneath here. Nope, I'm not drilling into anything. So let's go ahead and we'll drill that straight through there. Okay, after uh, a little bit of drilling and reaming, I've got this so it's going to fit down in here now. There we go. And that's going to be the support for the lamp. And I'm not going to use the extension base. And I need to run the wires down through this tube now. There goes the first one, the positive wire. And now we'll run the other one. It's like threading a needle. Okay, now let me fish that on down through here. Let me feel up. Yep, it's come out underneath. Good. And we'll just pull it right on down and then insert the lamp over the brass tube. There we go. And there we have it. 
It's all installed, ready to be lit up. Now, you can tweak it just a little bit if you got your angle off here, which I did a bit, apparently. One thing you can do that I found works with the Woodland Scenics uh, in this in type of installation is just take a little toothpick and a piece of toothpick and push it in on, on the side away from the lean and that way you can push it back and get it straightened out. But this one's, let's get it back over here just with a little tweaking like that. Okay, so that's the installation on the surface. And what I'll do is I will go ahead and extend my uh, gravel parking lot out here and uh, around the base and that will complete that installation. So now let's go underneath and take a look at the wiring. Okay, here we are on the underside of the layout now. And uh, this is my, my DC, my 12 volt DC accessory power bus. So you can see I've got a number of things already wired up to it. And I'm gonna add uh, these wires that came down from the light to it. Um, let me go ahead and show you, I'm using my uh, T-taps. And um, I've shown you how to use these in the past. They just fit around the wire here. And then using my uh, vice grip pliers here, I'm going to just pinch that down. And that's going to make the connection through there. And then I'll be able to insert my wires that feed these guys directly into these. So these are removable. If I need to do anything, I can just unplug them, plug them back in, whatever I want for power. Okay, I've prepared one of the little circuit boards that comes with these, and you can see the red and the green wires, they go to my red and the green DC power bus. So red is positive, the green in this case is negative, which is the power bus, uh, the DC power bus colors. So the positive goes to the one marked positive here, and the negative goes to this one here. Then on this side, we have a row of four contacts. So you've got three here that are attached to these resistors. And these resistors are three different values so that you can get three different brightness levels by simply attaching the wire to the one that you desire. So what, I, what you want to do is attach your negative wire here, and that's the shorter of these two wires. And then just by hand, touch the positive wire to each one of these in sequence and look at the brightness of the LED as you do that. And that way you can actively check the brightness level uh, before you make a final solder contact to this little board. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring my soldering iron Brett back here. We'll make the connection and we'll check them out. I have the wires connected underneath and now I'm going to go ahead and we'll test the different resistor values and see which one I like the best. So the first one I'm going to touch it to is going to be the brightest. There we go. So that's a very bright light right there. Let me move it on down. I'm going to go directly to the middle one. Okay, that's the middle brightness. And that's the dimmest setting. And to be honest with you, I like that one best. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it right to that particular one. Okay, so there we have it. So it's a fairly quick installation. They supply all the parts you need as far as the little resistor board. The wires are long enough to reach, looks like at almost three feet. And uh, so that's going to be good. So all that you need to do is supply the uh, DC voltage um, through a power bus or whatever. And I've shown you in the past how to install a DC power bus under your layout. And I'll put a link to that video above me here and uh, you'll be able to take a look back at that. So, that's all there is to installing these. Very quick and easy. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. If you'd like more information on these, take a look at the dccconcepts.com website and just do a search for lamps, and they'll come up right away. You can take a look at each one, the installation instructions are there, everything that you need to get a pretty good understanding of how these are going to fit on your model railroad. So, have a great weekend, have a great week, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.